These are two types of developers learning to make Roblox games. Nuber took six months to learn game development, while Technius learned it in just one week, making him 24 times faster than Nuber. While Nuber smashes his keyboard trying to figure out how to make a simple obby, Technius is over here building systems, mastering core concepts, and creating games that actually work. So what's the difference? Is there some kind of secret method that nobody is talking about? That is what we're going to cover in today's video, where I'll be showing you what separates fast learners from people stuck in this long cycle of learning how to make Roblox games. And by the end, you'll learn what it takes to be one of these fast learners and start making Roblox games today. But before we dive into the strategies, we need to address the thing that makes everything else possible. Goals. For Newbert, his goals might be something like, oh yeah, I want to make the next hit Roblox game so I can make millions of dollars and make this into my full-time career. Little does Newbert know, when your primary goal in the beginning at least, is something monetary like money or player count, and you're fixated on achieving that outcome, learning becomes work. And when learning feels like work, you burn out, you give up, and you never actually reach those goals anyway. For a lot of beginners, when they start, they have this mindset where they have to chase the results that these top developers, who are teenagers by the way, are making millions of dollars from. And when the journey becomes tough, because <laughs> let's be real here, game development is very hard, they stop only after a short period of time. Technius, thinks a little differently. He might think something like, I want to understand how games work, how to build cool stuff, and have fun creating them. This is the first secret, which is falling in love with the journey, not just the outcome. The only reason I've made it this far as a game developer is that I genuinely enjoyed the process all the way through, and I don't take for granted where I am now because of all the games that I've made up until this point and everything I've learned from them. When you're intrinsically motivated, you'll push through the hard parts because the journey itself is rewarding, not the outcome that you're trying so hard to achieve. Now, with the right mindset in place, let's break down the specific learning strategies that separate fast learners from people stuck in this learning cycle. However, I want to mention everyone's learning experience is different. Some people prefer watching tutorials while others prefer reading the official documentation. So I'm not here to tell you what is the correct learning method, but instead I want to talk about the good and bad practices that may come when stepping through the learning process. Let's look at how Newbert is learning. He picked up a very helpful tutorial guide on YouTube, shameless plug by the way, and is following along with the content. He's watching the video to learn scripting and wait. Newbert, what are you doing? Are you actually learning or are you just trying to finish the videos as fast as possible? This is a very common beginner mistake Newbert is facing in his journey called tutorial hell, which is the idea that you get stuck in a cycle of watching tutorials without applying your knowledge to your projects. And this doesn't just go for coding. This is literally any aspect of development that provides knowledge in any format. And this is an issue because people tend to rely on step-by-step -step instructions a little too much rather than using their own brains to think through the steps themselves. Use your brain! The thing in your head? Use it! This really avoids one big skill needed for game development, which is problem solving. If you don't train this skill, this can leave you experiencing a false sense of understanding that can lead to frustration, a lack of confidence, and uh, a feeling of not being able to progress beyond the tutorial stage. It's like keeping the training wheels on your bike forever. What's the solution? Simply just take them off and mess up as much as possible so you can learn from your mistakes. Let's look at how Technius learns. He watches the tutorials and wait, what is he doing? He's taking notes? He's actually practicing what he learns before moving to the next video. This, my friends, is called active learning. So many people make this mistake where they watch a tutorial or read up on an article and think they understand it until they realize once they need to put it to practical use, they get stuck. Because what they saw on whatever video or article isn't always applicable to their specific project. There is an underlying difference between being able to understand something versus being able to apply something. And the only way to apply something is to experiment. One of the biggest things that makes or breaks learning is actually applying what you learn to your games. Let's say you watch a tutorial about events. What is one way you can take what you learned about events and put it into your game? Make a part that kills the player when they touch it? Sure, but don't stop there. Now make a part that gives players 100 health when they touch it. Then make a part that teleports players to a different location. Each tutorial concept should become two to three different things you build and test yourself. You keep repeating the cycle of continuously applying concepts that you've learned and putting them into your creations. You're training your brain to get an overall understanding of how things work together, which will help you become a stronger developer. Getting stuck means you're learning. If you're not getting stuck, you're not 
learning enough. Here's a specific project you can do. Build a simple obstacle course with these exact features. A spawn location, five different obstacles, three parts that kill the player when touched, a finish line that displays a victory message, and a basic timer showing how long it took. That's it. Don't add any more, don't make it fancy, just make those features work. This single project will teach you building, scripting, UI designing, and game progression, which is everything you need for a foundation. Active learning is crucial, but here's another strategy that most people completely overlook. I believe one of the best ways to make Roblox games is to genuinely have fun with it. Instead of coding something that seems reasonable, why not turn it into something stupid that makes you laugh? Instead of modeling a sword, why not just model a meme? Make games surrounding your wacky creative ideas, because the more you follow with your creativity, the more fun the learning process becomes. <laughs> and trust me, when you have all these amazing ideas for Roblox games and you start to learn the process process of making games, most of the time it's not as fun as you thought it was and your motivation just drops. So why not keep the creative mind flowing by treating Roblox Studio as a playground to bring your ideas to life rather than a necessary tool. You could even ask one of your friends to make Roblox games with you so you don't feel alone in the process. Because what's better than brain rotifying? <laughs> I can't believe I just said that. The learning process, then sharing it with another person. Opening up your creative minds can be very fun, but this next strategy is something a lot of people overlook. It's the idea of shifting from a try to learn everything mindset to an only learn what you need mindset. Here's what I mean. Let's imagine Newbert tries to learn scripting then building, then UI designing, and then monetization, all separately without connecting them. He'll spend a whole month learning how to master scripting before moving on to the other aspects of game development. Only a few days in, he realizes that scripting is a lot harder than he realized, and then he quits before he even gets to try the other aspects. If you take a project-based approach where you start with a small game like an obby, and you work your way up to, let's say, a first-person shooter or a combat game, you only need to know the required knowledge for the project you're currently working on. So for an obby, you only need to know the basics of scripting, building, and UI designing specifically to make that obby work. Instead of trying to be a complete master at game development at the start, it's way better to see your skills slowly build with each game that you create over time. So not only do you build the skills, but you also don't feel overwhelmed and you get the positive feedback loop of making games from start to finish. And by doing this, you learn what you need and when you need it. It's 10 times more effective than abstract learning. Let's tackle the things that can either improve your learning or completely destroy it. AI and free models. <laughs> okay, okay, hear me out, hear me out. These tactics aren't evil but they can massively destroy your learning if used incorrectly. If you asked AI to make a complete simulator game from scratch and just copy and paste the code, you may have a game with bugs that you won't know how to fix, or you might have security issues, or you might have scalability issues when you try to create new updates for the game. But instead, ask specific questions like, I want to make a part that gives players coins when they touch it. Can you explain how the touched event works and show me a simple example? Or I have the script, but it's not working. Can you explain what each line does and why it might be broken? Free models do the same, which are basically free assets you can insert into your game with just a few clicks. It's not about completely avoiding these tactics or being too reliant on them. It's about using them as your assistant rather than your replacement. Use free models for boring stuff like trees and rocks, but not for core game mechanics you should be learning to build yourself. And once you understand this, you can focus on the things that you really care about. Just try not to overuse them. It's really tempting to let them do all the work for you. Okay, so let's put this all together. What's the real underlying difference between Newbert and Technius? Well, Newbert spends six months watching tutorials passively, trying to learn everything before actually creating anything, getting overwhelmed by how tough the concepts are, and giving up when things get too hard. Meanwhile, Technius spends one week learning by creating specific projects Embracing the challenges and mistakes that come along the way focuses on one thing at a time, and most importantly, having fun with the creative process. The secret isn't natural born talent or some magical technique, it's the approach that you decide. Your actionable step for this video is quite simple. Choose one simple game idea right now. I actually want you to comment it down below so that you're accountable to make it happen. Then spend at least two to three hours every day this week bringing it to life using these exact strategies. 
Don't skip any days, don't jump ahead, just trust the process. And if you need help coming up with ideas, you can join my Discord server because there's a tab that's specifically designed to show you some game ideas that you can take from there to then create your own game. Even if you never coded or modeled before, I'd say Roblox is the best platform for beginners to develop these skills because of how much they offer in their engine and for how easy it is to pick up and start creating. And here's the thing, even if it takes you two weeks instead of one, you're still learning 12 times faster than the traditional approach, and that's still a massive win. Wait, Technius, what's wrong? Oh my god, Newbert? You were Technius all along? Oh, I get it. You evolved into Technius after going through the journey of becoming a Roblox game developer. And you know what? This reminds me of something important about all this. It's not about the Robux or the visits or the fame or any outcome, really. Throughout the eight years that I've developed games on Roblox, I won't forget about the first time I picked up Roblox Studio and learned programming, which eventually turned into the skill that I use in my daily life, or the times where I'd be hopping onto a call with my friends every day and work countless hours on a project we knew might not give us the success that we wanted. And I know this from experience. When you start seeing the Robux come in and you start cashing it out for real money, you'll be very happy in the moment. But the things that will really stick with you is the journey of new discovery, frustrations with broken code, friendships with like-minded people who strive toward the same goals as you, and the personal achievements of creating something you thought you couldn't do. There will be so many days where you don't want to make something because it feels so out of reach or you lost the initial motivation behind it. But one thing is for certain, with the intrinsic desire to make games, little by little, you're building a house. And after years of perfecting that house, you look back on it and think about the grueling yet exciting journey that it took to get there. It all starts with one brick, and the only person who has control of what that brick could turn into is you. So why not start today? Or just make a soulless cash grab game and call it a day, I don't care. I mentioned in this video how crucial problem solving is to becoming a great developer. It's a skill that requires lots of practice through learning, and one of the best ways i found to learn it is through Brilliant, which is the sponsor for today's video. Brilliant is a platform that lets you learn with thousands of interactive lessons in subjects like computer science, math, data analytics, and AI. The way you learn from Brilliant is surprisingly effective with their approach. Each lesson is filled with hands-on problem solving that lets you play with the concepts. So instead of mindlessly watching or consuming knowledge through tutorials and articles, you can develop your critical thinking skills through problem solving rather than memorizing. So while you're building real-world knowledge of specific topics, You'll also develop the skill to think for yourself and tackle any tough problems during your development journey. Some of the content I think you'll love are their interactive programming courses like Thinking in Code, which specializes in teaching you the basics of computational problem solving with over 45 lessons and 570 exercises to help develop the skills you need to think like a programmer. Go ahead and try Brilliant for free by visiting brilliant.org slash brawldev, scanning the on-screen QR code, or clicking the first link in the description. And if you like it, you can get a 20% off annual premium subscription, which gives you unlimited daily access to everything on Brilliant. Thanks to Brilliant for the sponsorship, and if you want to start making Roblox games today, please check out my beginner scripting tutorial guide where you can learn how to code Roblox games. And while you're here, why not hit that subscribe button to see more videos like this? I definitely had a lot of fun making this. So with that, I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one. Take care.